Hi everybody, this is Ballerina Badass. My name is Georgia and this is my little friend, Cat Junior. I've had several requests to make a video about how to darn point shoes. Um, uh, so this is a sample. I finished this one earlier. You take the thread and you darn around the edge of the point shoe and I kind of went nuts and darned down here as well. Uh, for me, darning helps make my point shoes last longer. It creates a nice solid platform for the shoe. And in the long run, especially for me, um, I find it very beneficial. So um, I'm gonna show you how I do it. And I'm not going to be worrying about sewing the rest of the ribbons and elastics today. We're just gonna be focusing on the darning. So let's get to it. Okay, so here's what I use to darn my point shoes. Obviously, a point shoe. This is this is an X-Acto knife. There we go. I want to. I always like to have an X-Acto knife that has a cover on it because these suckers are sharp as heck. Very, very sharp. Very dangerous. So get one with a cover. Scissors. Um, you can use a um, lighter of any kind. Matches are okay, but I like this because it's a little more controllable and it's far away from your hands. This, I call this friendship bracelet uh, yarn. This is the yarn I use, but there's other kinds you can use different um, strengths. And you'll have to play with what kind works for you. This is a light pink, so it'll get mat, sort of match, but it could have been even lighter. If this is what was available, I got it at Michael's. Uh, obviously needles. I love a good needle case. Uh, darning needles, I would get something a bit thicker, more heavy duty, but that's up to you. Oh, also it's good to have um, a Thimble, thimble, thimble. Now today what I used, because I didn't have a thimble available, I used a cloth band-aid and I wrap it over my thumb so that I can pull the needle through and use it sort of um, to help get the needle through the thickness of the point shoe. This is super glue. Um, you can use, an. Uh, I use this just to sort of super glue different parts you'll see of the thread to make it a little bit stronger. And then this is also a needle threader, which I really love. It just helps get the thread through the needle. Ding, ding, ding. So these are all the items that I am using for my darning today. So let's get going with this puppy. This is the Grishko Nova. In general, I don't want to slice away too many layers. If you'll see with the finished shoe, I've taken off some of the satin because the satin can be very slippery. And I like to get that off of there before I start darning. So take your X-Acto knife and carefully, not too deep. You go too deep and you're slicing out important, valuable layers of canvas that you need to support your foot. So I'm just following the line. If you can see, like, you'll see just this, you can tell where the platform sort of begins. I'm going right along the platform. <laughs> <laughs> it's nutcracker season, which means it's all I hear in my head. Sugar plum fairy, sugar plum fairy. And then see here, I'm cutting down on either side. And I like to do it just right along here, like that. And then I cut along the sole and then I pull it off. So we are pulling it off. There we go. Bing. So now she's got a lip and now we say goodbye lip. Scissors. Snippity snip. Snip snip snippers. While we're at it we do want it to look as pretty as possible. As you can see I want to try and make it as even as possible around the edge. So this is a patience game. So now, threading your needle. We have my needles and mm, thread. Oh, I like to take out the length where I pull it till my arm stops. Ta-da! So it's like dun, 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 that long. If you go too long, it becomes unmanageable to um, keep pulling it through because you'll notice this thread is going to want to. Oh yeah, you're gonna play with it, Junior. <laughs> One moment. Junior, play with that instead. Uh, it's going to want to knot up very easily. You have to be patient and be careful not to let it do that. Now this is the old school way going nim, 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 and you try and push it through like this, eek. But because also this friendship thread, as I like to call it, from the friendship bracelets of the olden days, uh, 
it has lots of little pieces that separate, which is very annoying. And that is when the handy dandy, hello, there you are, threader comes through. You take Mr. Threader, put him through the hole of the needle, the eye of the needle, ding, ding. Then you take the thread and you put it through the little gadget there. And you let it sit. I like to actually get the thread bent together so it sort of gets it ready and then gently come on. Come on. Come. Yes. Yay! Ah! Now I double up. I double up my thread. Some people don't. That's up to you. But I find it's thicker and therefore stronger. And I don't have to go back as many times around. Mm -hmm -hmm. Again, you guys, it's very personal. This is a process that continues to grow. I'm rereading a book right now called how to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. I love that book. It took him 15 years just to get to the book where it is now. Again, the learning never stops, and I like that. But there are moments where maybe you feel like, aha, I've achieved, I have arrived. But then, you know, like, I've, I've achieved the triple pirouette. But then you come in the next day and maybe it's just not working for you. Ah, oh, back to the drawing board. What do you need to do today? Has why is your balance off today? What, you know? And then, of course, there are those people like Baryshnikov who just can turn for days. And I wonder if that man ever had other challenges. I'm sure he did. Baryshnikov, Mr. Baryshnikov, if you're watching this right now, did you have challenges as a dancer? Back to this. Now, I, you have a knot at the end here, okay? So, because I'm always thinking about, well, I don't want this knot to wear out and I want this to last as long as possible, I don't want to start down here where perhaps it's going to get the most um, uh, friction going on. I like to start on the side in the hopes that maybe it'll last a bit longer. Uh, so I'm going to start here and we simply, you want to grab some of the satin here and a little bit of the canvas underneath as much as you can. You want to Go as deep as you can without it getting so deep that you can't push the needle through. Needles will break very easily during this process too, you'll notice if you're not careful. So once I get it pushed through, and that's where a um, thimble comes in handy. You can use the thimble to push through on the finger. Also, you can use needle nose pliers carefully to pull the needle through if you're having trouble. But my process, I've been doing it so long, I just wheedle it through like that. Oh, my fingers are sore already from the earlier shoe. So I pulled it through. So I went directly from down to up on that first one. Now I'm going to go again. We're just starting this. So I want to get a nice loop started, a vertical loop. And when I mean vertical, I mean if the shoe is sitting like this, the loop is going up and down this way. Okay? God, I hope this makes sense. Please comment below if it does not make sense. So I'm going to go just a little bit to the right here. And I'm going to do it again, vertically. Satin and canvas. Push through. Oof. And already, I like to use, you see how it's starting to want to twist and curl? That's problematic. I use my thumb as a little guide, not too tight, but I can therefore pull the needle through and it's helping keep the thread going through straight. And then when it gets all knotted at the end, I can really coax it carefully. You want to take your time on this. There we go. Now I've got my first loop. Now, funny enough, you'll notice this loop is actually on a bit of a diagonal. It's the first half of an X. So what I'm going to do now is come back on the other side and I'm going to go horizontally under the loop, still grabbing satin and canvas over to there. Okay. Can you see that? And pulling it through again, using my thumb as a guide for the thread. And it's maybe hard to see, but that is the first little X. So now I go back to vertical. Again, I'm moving to the right of this little X here, over to here. And I'm going to go from down to up. Now, notice, once you're down to up, you want to get the thread out of the way of the needle, okay? Pulling it through. Ooh, don't you do it. Don't you do it. There we go. Don't knot up. There. And then coming back to the left of the loop, going under it, going horizontally. Oh, there we go. Right there. 
making sure you guys can see this and pushing through and I've gone under the loop oh see see how it's starting to do this like it, it separates and stuff again there's different kinds of threads you can get my fabulous kite thread that's back in LA I don't have with me which is why I went to fabulous Michaels and grabbed this now they had other kinds of thread but this just looked like the best thing for now so there we go two little X's so here we go and come back And through. So, right, there you go. That is the start. I have three little X's along here. So I'm going to go all the way around the shoe, including along that, that edge right there, okay? I'm going to go all the way around and along the edge, and that'll finish up pretty much all this, this thread that I did the arm's length and then doubled it. That's about how much it takes to get all the way around. Once I've done that, then I'll cut that off, um, knot it, cut it off, and then I'm going to do a second run. I'm going to go from here down to sort of anchor this satin in, and then across, up, and then another one across here. That's what I'm going to do this time. Sometimes I've just gone around the circle twice. I do different things to try out what is the best platform for me. So at the very end, I take crazy glue and I just dab a tiny, tiny bit because this has a little brush that gets dry very quickly. But I just dab a tiny little bit right where the knots are, but tiny because it dries and hardens and then that gets slippery too. So you have to be careful about that. Also, you can use the lighter and that will also just clean up the edges a little bit. If there's anything kind of um, fraying, the lighter really cleans that up nicely, which is great. And uh, so yeah, that is the finished product. Keep doing your research. Keep looking for more videos like this one to find out how other dancers are doing it. There's another really great video that I am including in the link, um, in, in the, my description below, the link is there, uh, to what different professional ballet, ballet dancers do to prepare their point shoes in general. It's fabulous. Also next week, I'm gonna be making a special post about a really fantastic book on uh, point shoes. The link is also below, um, and it's by one of my great mentors, Ken Ludden, who I had the opportunity to train with at the Margot Fontaine Academy up in Beacon, New York. He is brilliant, and this book that he wrote on the point shoe, the history of the point shoe, how it works, uh, exercises to strengthen your feet in preparation for the point shoe, and sewing it, everything. It is an indispensable book. I'm really grateful for all of you as subscribers and for your input. It's so exciting to have this um, platform to share our experiences as dancers. And as I always say, never give up, never stop dancing. Thank you. Toy, toy, toy.